act like I left on my own. Golly, I didn't do it. They didn't want me like that ex-girlfriend. Shoot, I gotta go. Gladly, I gotta rebound. They was the lions. They picked me up. You know what I mean? Now they feeding me good, taking me to dinners. You know what I mean? The time has come. Here's the story time y'all have been waiting for. I will say these TB Ronas jerseys, whoa. Probably have to be the coolest jerseys of my career thus far. I'll never wear it again. So. What's up y'all, my name is Clark Hasla, better known as Adventure Athlete, and welcome back to another video. I've been looking forward to making this video for a while now, and I know you guys have been waiting to hear the story as to how I got traded this past season while playing pro football down in Mexico. I'm gonna take y'all back to January of 2022. I originally moved down to Cancun, Mexico to get the chance to train for three months before I was gonna be moving to play in the fan-controlled football league in Atlanta starting in March. I was really looking forward to getting the chance to play in the FCF. This would be my first time since college back in 2019 that I'd be playing back in the States, as well as this would be my first time playing pro arena football. A week prior to heading back home to America to visit my family before making the move to Atlanta, my good friend and mentor Armando Salzano suggested that he and I go check out a TB Ronas practice up in Cancun. I was living in Playa del Carmen at the time and I'd actually trained with the TB Ronas back in 2021 before the pandemic ended up canceling their season. My goal has always been to want to play football down here in Mexico ever since I started playing football internationally. So we decided to head up for one practice on a Thursday night. It was cool getting a chance to see some of my teammates that I trained with previously a year prior with the team. We showed up to the practice and it was a great experience all around. I got the chance to meet all the coaches. They really included me in the practice as well as the owner and some other members of of the management team. Like I said, I'd known quite a few of these players because I had practiced with them before. And it was really cool to see how much progress the team had made since back in 2021. For those of you that didn't know, this was the first inaugural year for the TB Runners at Cancun and the first organization to ever have a pro football team in Cancun. It was really cool because we practiced in the famous Andreas Quintana Row Stadium. And I thought to myself, it'd be really cool to get the chance to play for this organization one day. Right before leaving after the practice, I ended up going and talking with the player development and recruiter for the team. We ended up talking for about 45 minutes and that's where I learned a lot about the organization and what their goals and aspirations were for this upcoming 2022 season. I'd mentioned that I had already signed to play football in Atlanta, but he mentioned to me that the team was really looking to sign an American quarterback ASAP. Three days later, I found myself at a restaurant sitting with the owner of the team, some investors, and my mentor Armando talking about contract negotiation. We didn't end up agreeing to terms, so I hopped on the plane and headed home and had my sights on playing in the FCF. Next thing you know, I'm receiving a phone call and I'm headed back down to Cancun as the team and I had reached a contract agreement just two months before the season was about to kick off. I arrived back in Cancun on March 16th for the first day of camp. For the next month, I bonded and trained with my teammates and learned the entire offense a month prior before the other imports were gonna report down in Cancun. And there was a good friendly quarterback competition leading up to the first scrimmage. On April 3rd, all 15 other international American imports flew into Cancun. We all moved into this huge compound hotel and the work was now about to really get started as we are one month away from our first game of the season and the first game ever with this franchise. I was really stoked about some of the import players that they brought in for this past season. We ended up bringing in four offensive linemen. My buddy Locke, who played at Sacramento State, my boy Jama, who played at UCF, Dom who played at the University of Alabama, and Savage who played at Oklahoma. All of these guys had NFL training camp experience and bounced around from the SCF, XFL, and AFL. We brought in one defensive lineman, David, who played at Miami, and one DN, Monty, who played at Cincinnati. We brought in a stud running back, Caleb Stennis, who is a well-known running back over in Europe. Two receivers, Ari Wirtz, who played at Georgia State, and JD Crandall, who's played pro football in Mexico for a couple years. We also brought in a linebacker, Philip Redwine, who was my roommate. He played at Oklahoma State. And a really good safety, Malik Brown, who was playing pro arena football. Go Sharks! We had six other national imports and players with Mexican pro football experience, and the rest of our team was all national local players. I really appreciate my time spent with all the American imports. I really learned a lot more about the game and we had a lot of bonding moments together that I'll never forget. Oh man, we got some crazy stories, y'all. Like we lived in Cancun. Whoa. <laughs> I wish I could tell you guys, but some of these stories, you know, might not, yeah. This was my first time playing on a team with more than two imports. And looking back now, all the time spent with these guys, it was a great experience overall. But the jackhammer in front of our compound for three months straight. Are you kidding me? 
I'm trying to vlog here. No, no, no. April 16th came around and we had our first scrimmage of the season. This was the first time that all of the fans in Cancun were really excited to see what our team was gonna be about this year. I was eventually named the starter after that scrimmage. And on April 29th, we were getting on a plane headed to our first away game. Playing in our first game as a franchise, I thought we did really well. The team we were playing at the time had been around for about three years and they were really well coached. We had the lead and momentum the entire game. However, we ended up losing 12 to 21. The score doesn't really reflect the outcome as in the fourth quarter, we had a muff snap and a blocked punt, which gave the other team the opportunity to score twice in our own red zone. It was very unfortunate to have this first loss of the season but I think it was good for us as a team because it really forced us to have to come together as international players from America and the local players down in Cancun. After the game, it was a crazy adventure because half the team ended up flying back home to Cancun at 3 a.m. the following morning. And then the other half of the team, which I was a part of, we were stuck in Mexico City for about five days. As much as I wanted to get back to Cancun after the game, it was a great experience bonding with my brothers and virtually living in a new city in Mexico. And as y'all know, some of the best memories always happen off the field with your teammate. We definitely got into a little bit of trouble in Mexico City, but uh, you guys know me, I stay out of trouble. Come on now. Nope. It was unfortunate that half the team missed four days of practice because our flights kept getting canceled. But thankfully for week two, we had a bye. Coming into week two of the season, this was gonna be a big statement game for us as a franchise and our first inaugural ever home game in Cancun. There was a little bit of drama going on as some of the coaches did feel like I was the problem as to why we didn't have as an efficient offense as we should have in week one. Whereas some other coaches felt like the play calling wasn't as good as it should have been. As an offense, our goal is to put up points and only putting up 12 points in the first game was something that I knew we had to improve on coming into week two. I felt a lot of pressure coming into week two personally as the franchise quarterback and because this was the first game in Cancun history but in my eyes I look as pressure as a privilege. We had a really good week in practice coming into week two and I was really confident. In week two we were playing a team that was 3-0 the Taquileros de Jalisco and we were definitely coming in as the underdog. I really felt like our offense came together this game. Our offensive line was firing out giving me plenty of time to throw the ball and we had a really solid game plan. I ended up throwing three touchdowns in the first half and it was such a fun experience getting the chance to play in front of all the fans in Cancun as well as having my family back home watch the game and having a lot of friends and mentors in the stands. But this is now where things get interesting because I only played in the first half and essentially I was benched and one of the local players took over at quarterback to finish out the game. As an offensive unit, we ended up not scoring the rest of the game, but our defense played lights out and ended up forcing five interceptions and we managed to come out with a win 20 to 14. I'll never forget celebrating with my teammates in Cancun after getting our first win in franchise history. Little did I know that things were about to get real interesting coming into the office on Monday as I found out that a majority of our coaching staff had just been fired. Apparently there was a lot of things going on behind closed doors that me and my teammates were not aware of and we pretty much had an entire coaching change after week two and we were headed into week three playing the number one team in Mexico at the time. One thing that I learned this past year as an international player is that it's really important to have good relationships with people off the field such as the management, some of the investors, all your coaches because playing overseas there's a lot of things going on behind closed doors. It's a game within a game within a game within a game. You always got to make sure you play the game before it plays you. And that leads me to week three. My team was headed to Monterey, which is known as the football city in Mexico, to play a really solid football team. I thought we had a really good week in practice with the new coaching staff, and I felt really confident coming into this game with how much success we had in week two. However, in the first quarter, I ended up taking a big hit in my left shoulder, and my entire left arm went numb. I tried to stay in the game and tough it out, and with the adrenaline kicking in, I thought I was okay. But as the next play came about, I literally could not move my left arm. I fumbled the ball, and we ended up having a turn. Over. After that, I ended up coming out of the game to get evaluated. This was the first time I'd ever faced an injury in an actual football game. I did try to make a comeback in the third quarter, but I learned now as a player, if I'm hurt and I'm not at my full potential, it's better to have my backup come in and replace me to give our team the best chance to win. What was really unfortunate was after getting a whole new coaching staff and having a game plan for week three that was really built around my style of play as a quarterback, me getting hurt really made the team suffer and we ended up losing 38 to zero. Oof. 38 to zero. Mm. Post game, the flight home, not a good time. Not a good time. My shoulder ended up being fine. I ended up just having a stinger and a huge bruise, so I was gonna be okay to play in week four. That week, heading into week four, things started to get a lot more interesting off the field as a first year franchise. You're gonna have some ups and downs, and all I'm gonna say is it got to a point where, as a team, we almost all didn't play coming into week four. It's my money and I need it now! However, the team and the management came to an agreement that everyone was still gonna play in week four. Right before the game in week four, 
my quarterback coach came up to me and told me that I was not going to be starting in the game. I was a little surprised by his decision, but as a player, I respected it, and I proceeded not to play at all in week four. There was some other drama going on off the field, and as a player, this is where you really got to make sure you're playing the game within the game within the game and listening and asking questions and communicating with your coaches and your management. It's my money, and I need it now! We ended up losing the game in week four, 42 to 14. And I was really frustrated because as a team, we were way better than our opponent. It was interesting because after the game, a lot of players from the other team were asking why I didn't play, and I told them that I got benched. The following day on May 29th, I received a phone call from the commissioner informing me that I had just been traded. I also received a phone call from my new head coach for the Taquileros de Jalisco in Guadalajara. And the next thing I know, in 24 hours, I'm on a flight leaving Cancun all the way to Jalisco, moving to a brand new city in Mexico to join a brand new team. And in just one week of preparation, I had to get ready to play the same team in Monterey that got me injured and that beat my former team 38 to 0. When I arrived in Guadalajara, my new team again had a stacked import roster from America and a really good group of local players. I quickly learned that I could have a huge impact on this team and the organization as a whole. Heading into week five, I could not have been more proud of my new team, the coaches, the defense as a whole who played lights out and got a bunch of turnovers that got me the ball, my offensive line that blocked well, and my skill guys who played lights out. I ended up having one of the best games of my career, going 22 for 33 with 348 yards, one touchdown, 44 rushing yards, and another touchdown on the ground. I wouldn't call it an upset, but my new team and I came into Monterey, the football town in Mexico, beating the number one team in Mexico 29 to 27. I'll never forget, we had five minutes left on the clock in the fourth quarter, and my offense as a unit, we drove all the way down the field and chewed up all the clock to seal the game. Besides winning the Czech Bowl in 2021, this has to have been my most favorite game that I've been a part of in my career as a football player. Getting beat by these guys in week three on another team and getting injured to them beating them in week five, there was no better feeling in the world. I will add that my former team, the TB Runners, ended up losing 62 to nothing in week five. However, I have a lot of respect for everyone that's a part of that franchise, and I wish them nothing but the best in the future. At the end of the day, everything in life happens for a reason, and I really thank God for this experience as a whole. I really grew as a man this past year playing football, and some of the experiences that I had off the field have prepared me for the rest of my life. Again, I want to say thank you to everyone who's a part of the TB Runners organization. You guys will always be family to me. However, I could not have been happier to have gotten traded to the Taquileros. And that is how I ended up getting traded. If you guys have any more questions, leave them down in the comments. And make sure you guys stay tuned as I've got some game day vlogs from this past season coming out here real soon. And at the end of the day, always know, trust the process and trust in God and he'll make sure he takes care of you. I'll see you on the next video.